All right, so here are the top mental drivers that you need to install in your brain in order to change your life. And this is what I did for myself. So this is also known as philosophy or beliefs or whatever you want to call it. I like to call it mental drivers because it's like, you know, depending on how old you are, you will or will not remember this. I don't know if you remember when you when you needed to connect something to your computer, like a printer or a mouse or a keyboard or something, you needed to install a driver on your computer for it to work. That's the same thing with our brain. We need to install the correct drivers in our brain for it to achieve the results and the success that we want in whatever you want out of life, right? I always say that the good life is like Aristotle said, health, wealth, love, and happiness. And so in order to achieve the good life, which is called health, wealth, love, and happiness, you need to have the correct drivers installed in your brain or the correct philosophy installed in your brain. And what's the number one driver that I think is the driver that changes people's lives the most. It's, uh, I call it, blame yourself for absolutely everything. Absolutely everything you need to blame yourself. It's like Jim Rohn, one of my best mentors, he said that he used to have his old blame list. And whenever somebody would ask him, why is he 25 year old American male, every reason to do well, and he's living paycheck to paycheck, got, got penny in his pockets, nothing in the bank and the creditors calling, Jim Rohn used to say, well, this is why I'm not successful. This is why I have pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank credit card creditors calling. This whole blame list, it's the weather, it's the job, it's the taxes, it's the government, it's the state, it's the politics, it's the school, it's the teachers, it's the preachers. He had this whole blame list for who he would blame for not being successful at age 25, every reason to do well. And once he threw that blame list away, was when his life exploded into change. And that's what you need to do for your life to explode into change. You need to throw away your blame list because subconsciously you all have your own blame list, right? I had my own blame list back in 2017 when I met my teacher, Jim Rohn. I had my own blame list. And then I met my teacher, Jim Rohn, who taught me better, and I threw that blame list away. Now, obviously, it's not a physical blame list. It's something in your mind, in your unconscious, right? And then... Once when you think about making more money or something like that, immediately your subconscious brings the information back to your brain and say, no, you can't do it because of this. And so that's the thing. That's the most important thing that you can change right now in order to see more success. Absolutely blame yourself for everything in your life. No matter what it is, blame yourself for it. You can even take out a piece of paper right now and write down all the reasons for not being rich. All the reasons that you can think of for not being rich and for not living a good life so far, right? My parents, my teachers, my my people used to bully me in school, um, my ex-girlfriend, my, uh, my, my wife took everything in the divorce or... Um, you know, the economy, the, the, the government, the, like anything that you can think of that your mind comes up with, write it down in a list called blame list, write it down in pen and paper. Then what you're going to do is you're going to rip that piece of paper out of your journal. You're going to crumble it and you're going to burn it to smithereens. And then you're going to create a new list. You call it a new blame list, <clears throat> put the date and the year new blame list, then what you're going to do is you're going to write your own name because that's the only person to blame for your success. It's like Earl Schof, Jim Rohn's mentor said, and by the way, it's interesting, this mentor thing, right? Jim Rohn was my mentor and Jim Rohn had another mentor that mentored him, which was Earl Schof because Jim Rohn was also poor and he came from a modest family just like me. I was born in a poor third world country to poor parents and I became a self-made millionaire in my 20s. And Jim Rohn also came from a, uh, um, you know, a modest family and he learned from his mentor Earl Schof and probably Earl Schof had a mentor, you know, um, and... Jim Rohn was also mentored to Tony Robbins, and now Tony Robbins also mentors other people, and like it goes down and down and down and down the mentoring, right? And you're, at the end of your life, if you live right, you're an amalgamation of hundreds of people. I have, ro I have modeled tens of people, probably, probably more than I'm trying to think right now, dozens of people that I've modeled. Modeling is when you learn from somebody and then you, for a period, 
copy exactly what they do, how they how they talk, the expressions that they use, how they move, their attitude, their posture, their tonality. You literally copy the person because then your brain thinks that you are that person and then you can extract all the insights and the data and the mental drivers that that person has to install in your brain, right? You can install their mental drivers in your brain. And so and then once you've copied exactly what they do, then you move on to the next person, right? Then you copy exactly what they do, how they talk, how they teach, how they preach. That's why this this is interesting at this YouTube channel that probably depending on who I'm modeling at the time, my expressions will be different. The way I think and the way I speak will be different because I'm modeling somebody, right? And I've modeled Jim Rohn. I've modeled Ty Lopez, Tony Robbins, um, Bob Proctor, Napoleon Hill, um, Dale Carnegie, um, Frank Kern, John Benson, Sabri Subi, Jordan Belfort, L like it's coming to me right now, the amount of people that I've modeled is insane, so anyways, um, what was I talking about when I got to this model thing? Oh, yeah, it's interesting how people have, um, how a bunch of people have mentors, right? And how this mentor thing, it goes on and on and on. You know, um, Aristotle had a mentor. Um, Socrates had a mentor. Plato uh, uh, was mentored by Socrates. And then, you know, it goes on and on and on. That's, I found it, I find it fantastic that um, the human is able, is able to do that. It's, it's absolutely, uh, you know, and Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's um, business partner, um, you know, uh, he, he, he passed away and uh, uh, unfortunately, but I learned so much from him and Charlie Munger has a saying that if you want to live a horrible life, learn from only your mistakes. So he was emphasizing how it's important to learn from other people's mistakes to have mentors, right? So anyways, um, so the first thing that you can do is blame yourself. Create a new blame list and put only one name on this blame list and call it, you know, blame list, the date, and then put your name on the blame list. And that's your only blame. You Try for one week only to not blame anything, absolutely anything. Don't blame anything for one week. It doesn't need to be your whole life, but I bet you're going to like it so much that you're not going to, uh, you're never going to want to quit, right? So that's the first driver that I installed in my mind that changed my life. Second, very important driver is stop complaining. Stop complaining. You know, the Bible has a very interesting story where Moses went to free the Israelites from Egypt and then, um, and then they spent like 40 years or something just walking in circles because they were just complaining and complaining and complaining. And God was like, you know what? I've had it with you guys. You guys are going to, I I, I was going to give you the promised land. I was going to give you guys everything you needed, but you guys are only complaining. You guys are, you know, <laughs> you guys are just complaining all day long. I can't take it anymore. God said, you know, um, <laughs> um, not exactly, you know, I'm paraphrasing, obviously I'm paraphrasing, but God said, I can't take it anymore. Stop complaining. Now I'm going to make you guys run around in circles for 40 years until this whole generation dies. And then the next generation I'm going to take to the promised land. So complaining is horrible for your mind. It's a destructive driver for your mind, right? Do not ever complain. Oh, but my life sucks. Did you know that when I was poor, even when I was poor, I always enjoyed life to the max. I always enjoyed life to the max. I laughed my ass off. I hang out with my friends. I was always in a good mood. I was always in a positive mood. I was never loomy and depressive. I was never like that. I was even when I was poor, I was never depressed. I was never, I've always had a positive attitude. And now, of course, positivity can't get you out of depression uh, and all that stuff. I get that. But what I'm trying to say is you're not helping your case by uttering all these negativity from your mouth and complaining about how the grass is greener on the other side. Complaining does nothing for you, but eat at your mind and your soul. It destroys you. It's a destructive mental driver. So install a new mental driver, which is zero complaints. Be grateful for absolutely everything because the worst that you have it right now, you might de you might be depressed. You might be living paycheck to paycheck. You might be anxious out of your mind. You might be whatever. But if you live in the United States, you have it better than 90% of people. If you live in the United States, you have it better than literally 90% of people. So don't complain. 
And even if you are in another country, like let's say you are in, I don't know, uh, you are in a horrible third world country and you're living paycheck to paycheck and your currency is worth nothing, you know, just like back in Brazil where I'm from. And but you still ate today and you still have a roof over your head and you still have a cell phone and you're still watching this video and you still have Internet connection to be able to watch this video. So be grateful for that. Be grateful for those little things as well. Don't just complain, complain, complain. Right. I like um, Tony Robbins. He he said the story once where he said that. Um, so, you know, God came down to earth and went to speak to this guy. And he was like, hey, so what do you think about this earth that I made for you? And the guy was like, good thing you're here, Lord, because I have some stuff to <laughs> I have a bone to pick with you. Right. You know, you created all this stuff, all these people here. They just irritate me. They just stress me out. You know, you created this weather and you, you never know it's gonna, if it's going to be hot or if it's going to be cold. You know, you've, you've created this, uh, these ants these, and they, they bite my ass, these ants, and it, and it hurts and stings like hell. And it was like, and God was like, oh, okay, okay. And then God went to another person and said, hey, um, so how do you like this earth I made for you? And the other person says, God... Uh, so, so good you're here i need to tell you like this place is absolutely amazing i mean you created all these people around me to challenge me to develop myself to become better um you've created these these little ants that sting my butt and it hurts but it's so it makes me feel alive and then you the, this weather that's amazing you never know if it's going to be hot it's going to be cold you always have a different change of pace it's amazing thank you so much for creating this amazing earth so let me ask you something right now. Who do you think, if you're God, right, who are you going to want to spend more time with? Obviously, the guy that doesn't complain. And so complain is a huge thing, right? Complain, complaint is a destructive driver in your mind, right? So number one, create your blame list. Number two, install the mental driver of complaint. Do not complain anymore. Right now, there's so many other stuff that we can talk about that I think are extremely important mental drivers for you to install, like the curiosity driver. Always be curious, always be learning, always be reading books, always be studying courses, always be looking for mentors, always be modeling somebody, always be looking for somebody to to learn from, because it's like the 16th president Abraham Lincoln said, right? I learn from everybody, even if it's what not to do. Always learn from absolutely everybody. Like Charlie Morgan said, if you want to live a horrible life, learn from only yourself, right? Um, uh, uh, it's not Charlie Morgan. I said Charlie Morgan. This, Charlie Morgan is a YouTuber. It's a Charlie Munger. <laughs> Charlie Morgan, shout out to you. Um, uh, yeah, so, th so that could be something else that you can install in your mind, right? Like, like the never-ending curiosity. But let me think of something that's going to really explode your life. Maybe action action man because look results in any area in your life is the result of two things 50 percent studying 50 percent action because i can tell you all day long to go after mentors to buy courses to buy books to read and accumulate knowledge accumulate wisdom because the only way to, to make money obviously is to accumulate new knowledge and wisdom and skills because in order to make money and you know this is another whole video that we can go into but in order to make money just very simply in macroeconomically there's this thing called reciprocal reciprocal altruism where you do something good for somebody and they do something good for you back um so you solve somebody's problem they pay you money and to, in order to solve somebody's problem you need to know how to solve that somebody's problem and know how is also known as skills and in order to acquire skills you need to learn those skills right and so in order to learn those skills you need to read books study courses um you know go to seminars uh find some mentors so you can acquire new knowledge acquire new skills so you can solve more problems for people and generate more value to people and get paid for that value that you generate <gasps> Ooh, and that's called reciprocal reciprocal altruism but that is only 50 percent of the success and the results the other 50 percent is called action Action performs miracles. Action performs miracles of all kinds. And it's so amazing how action performs miracles, right? It's like if you ask somebody, hey, um, how many, if you ask the average, but ask yourself right now, okay, I'm looking at you, ask yourself, if you drop down and I ask you to do as much push-ups as you can possibly do right now, how many do you think you could do? 
well, let's say you you're a little bit out of shape. You haven't you haven't done some exercise in a little in, in a little while, right? Let's just say, and let's just say the max you can do is five. Okay, let's just say the max maximum push-ups you could do is five. Okay, now, uh, what if you rest a little? You think you can do five more? The answer is of course. Now, what if you rest a little and do a little bit and do five more? What if you rest a little then and do five more? And what if you rest a little then and do five more? And then the other day, you can do 10. Wow, how did we get from five to 10? It's a miracle called action, putting knowledge and wisdom into action, right? And then if you're doing 10, rest a little, do 10 more, rest a little, do 10 more, rest a little. Now you can do 15. Wow, how did we go from five to 15? It's a miracle. But this miracle is only, it only happens to people that take action. It only happens this miracle for people who take action. There's a very interesting Bible story that illustrates this flawlessly, which is the story of Jesus and Peter. Well, Jesus, um, um, Peter came to Jesus and said, Jesus, um, so here's the deal, Jesus. It's time to pay our taxes and we don't have any money. And Jesus said, no problem. Now, Word has it, right, if you if you study a little bit about history, word has it that Jesus was a miracle worker. So if you ask a miracle worker, if you hand him a problem, what would he be inclined to say? No problem. Now, I'm telling you, you need to hang out with people like that, right? I have a group of people like that. We do business around the world. You hand these people a problem, they say no problem. Why? How early would they wake up to solve this problem? Early as it takes. How many books would they read to solve this problem? As much as they needed. How many hours would they work to solve this problem? As much as it takes. So it's what? No problem. You need to hang out with people like that. You need to have that no problem mindset and do whatever it takes to fix that problem. So anyways, so Peter... Uh, said, um, Jesus, we need to pay the taxes and we don't have any money. And Jesus said to Peter, no problem. Go fishing. Wow. <laughs> and if you recall in the story, Peter was what? A fisherman. Wow. How clever. Isn't that clever? And so Peter, uh, so Jesus said, right, go fishing. And the first fish you catch, look in his mouth. And then Peter was a fisherman, okay, so this was pretty easy for him. And then Peter catched a fish. First fish he catch, he looked in his mouth, and there was coins. Coins in the fish's mouth. And the actual value of the coins was the exact amount to pay Peter's taxes and Jesus' taxes. And so that gives you Jesus' positions on taxes, right? You need to pay taxes. <laughs> Anyways, um, but here's the moral of the story. If you're a fisherman, right, and you could fish, and you should fish, and you don't fish, you have no miracle. That's the thing. You need to put your knowledge and wisdom and your profession into action or accumulate new knowledge and new wisdom and new professions, put that into action. So this is the beauty of the story. If you could fish, you should fish, you don't fish, you have no miracle. If you could change, you should change, you don't change, no miracle. If you could walk around the block, should walk around your block for your good health, don't walk around the block, you have no miracle. If you should read a book, could read a book, and don't read a book, you have no miracle. So put your knowledge and wisdom into action. These are the very important things to change your life, the three important things. Blame list, don't complain, accumulate as much knowledge, and put it into action for things actually. Hope you love this video. Subscribe and like this video and comment here what you would like to see next. Love you. See you in the next one.